Oh, that's the other way I wanted it. I have uploaded my PowerPoints and videos of my lectures. If you have missed a day of lecture, go on to our Google Classroom. I also have a copy of our notes. I'm going to upload that to Google Classroom. They are also in our binder. If you've missed anything. Otherwise, yesterday, we took a look at some images. We read an article about impressionism. And today, we're ready to learn some more stuff about it. We already looked at the Renaissance, and our Renaissance was characterized by realistic, rich colors, had Greek influence, had a lot of religious, portraits, mythology, that sort of subject matter. And that was in about the 1500s. Our Impressionism is in the 1800s. And in that time, the 17 and 1600s, they really, really liked the Renaissance work. And they're going to try to stick with the Renaissance. So they have, we classify it as academic art because artists at this time are going to academies to learn how to replicate Renaissance. And they then showcase their work in salons. And these salons and academies rule the art world. When you go to the academy, you have to study for a year and pass a test, just drawing. You have to pass a drawing test and study for a year before you can even touch a paintbrush. Yes. But it's how um, they thought that you would learn art best. And they thought that artwork needed to have a high-minded message, meaning there needed to be a story or moral code that you were learning from the picture. So they thought of different subject matters of art as more worthy than others. Historical paintings being at the top of the list. The image that you see on the screen is of Jane, and she is the one who is on the throne for about nine days before Queen Mary, English, took the throne. And she was beheaded for treason at the age of 16. This is a historical painting. Up next is portraiture. Genre painting is paintings of everyday life. And lastly, landscapes and still lives were not thought very highly of. This is an image of uh, the Oath of Karate. And these three gentlemen are swearing their oaths to Rome, and they're about to go fight. The story goes that Rome was in war with another, a neighboring city. And instead of having thousands and thousands of people die in an all-out war, they came to the conclusion that they should have three young men fight to the death and whoever the victor was is the victor of the war, instead of having all those armies die. These three are the three brothers from Rome that are going to go fight in this. There are three brothers and they're swearing their oath and they're about to go. This young lady who seems very distraught is their sister. And she's also engaged to one of the gentlemen who is fighting on the other side. Oh. So either way, she is going to lose someone she loves. That's terrible. Yes, it is. Wow. That's what she was upset. Who's the person sitting next to her, though? Her mother. Oh. Who is also upset because chances are at least one of her sons is going to die. <laughs> only uh, the Rome did win, and only one brother survived. Out of the all total six people fighting, this is a true like story. It's Greek, Greek, uh, Greek row. So take it with a grain of salt. We didn't have you know like a lot of historical documents from back then. So it's a myth. Yeah. Where's the legend? 
Legend, bit, something. That would be so epic with six people taking out, taking out a whole army. No, the six people are the three on three battles, so the army didn't have to fight. Oh. Uh, yeah, they're trying to save thousands of people's lives by not having the entire army fight Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. So here's an image of the salons. And a salon is like an art gallery. And if you were anybody as an artist, you had stuff in the salon. But even within the salon, there's even degrees of how good you are. There are usually two rooms. The first room, the main room, looks like this. You have your stuff in here, you're doing pretty good. If you have your stuff at eye level in here, you are the cream of the crop. The further you get to the ceiling, the less good the critics thought you were. And if you didn't make it into the first room, you were only in the second room, you really weren't that good. If you were the top of the second room, you were pretty good. I guess. But this is the only way artists got their name out. They didn't, like right now we have the internet and newspapers and all this information, the internet in general, um, galleries all over downtown. They didn't have that back then. This was the only gallery. So if you didn't make it in this salon, you did not make any money. Nobody purchased your work because you had nowhere to sell it. Nobody would know your name, so no one would commission you to make anything. You would go hungry. So in order to make money, in order to survive, you had to play by the salon and the academy's rules. And that's how they forced artists to paint realistically in the Renaissance style and with these subject matters. Because artists like to eat. Like everybody else. There is a spot in your, on your worksheet to write what academic art is. It reminisces the Renaissance time period with specific subjects being worth more than others. And the salons and academies forced artists to complete artworks in a certain style and subject. Something along those lines. Um, that's definitely the main point of academic art. Renaissance and high-minded would be the point of academic. Renaissance style, high-minded message. Okay. Yes. How did this affect artists? It forced them to uh, force them how to paint and what to paint. Force them to do the Renaissance style and these subjects. Subject being what the artwork is of. You don't have to memorize those um, five bullet points, as long as you know that they were very specific. So number ten. This young lady, Jane, She's in her undergarments at the moment. This lady back here, lady in waiting, is holding her gown. She's very distraught. And they appear to be on like a stage. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, like, she will back by. Yep, she's about to be ahead. Her head is going to be put on that, and then this guy with his axe is going to chop it off. Why? You know, this would be the worst job ever. It's like a slide. Let me read the whole thing. She was like 16 too. What the heck? 16 was a lot older back then. 
What? We should get a lot more responsibility at 16 than we have at 16 now. Are you looking? Yes. Halfway for good life at 16. Okay. So, Lady Jane, after the king's death, she was proclaimed queen, being given precedence over King Henry the Eighth's daughters, who was married to her and Elizabeth. Two weeks after the death of her brother, Mary, who had the support of the English people, claimed the throne, which Jane relinquished, having reigned for only nine days. Jane, her husband, Lord Dudley, and the father were imprisoned in the Tower of London on charges of high treason. On Friday the 12th of February, Mary had Jane, then age 16, and her husband beheaded. Her father followed two days later. That's horrible. Uh, wait, what's number five? <laughs> number five uh, still is still life. life. Okay, got it. In just about a decade, we go from academic art very realistic, structured, high-minded messages to something that looks scratchy and incomplete. This is one of the most dramatic changes we see in art, especially in that amount of time. Yeah, the guy with the top hat, it looks like he was going smooth right there, and then when he got to the woman, he was like, what the heck? <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. Yes, it is. One of the main reasons this is going to be because of the camera. Before we get into the why, let's talk about what we're looking at. So what does Impressionism look like? Why does it look like this? The goal of Impressionism is to portray the artist's conceptual impression rather than recreate the details of reality. The artist was not trying to show you a picture of a lake with boats. They're not trying to give you every detail of the lake with boats. Instead, they are trying to give you the impression, how it feels like to be there, a moment in time at that place. Our memories are fuzzy. Everything out of the corner of our eyes, most of our field of vision is fuzzy. They are trying to paint these in just a few moments because light changes. Therefore, it's quick, it has brush strokes, visible brush strokes, and they're done exceedingly quickly and outside. Oh, starry Night one? I mean, Starry Night one? Is, is starry Night verges on expressionism instead of impressionism, but it's kind of riding that border. Short, loose brush strokes, pure, intense colors. You guys mixed values. So you would have green, dark green, light green. They are just going to do green. They're not going to do a lot of mixing. Instead, they're going to lay different colors next to each other. So if they put a lot of green and white in it, it makes the light green even though they're not mixing it. They're not going to use any black. There's not a lot of black in nature. But they're going to combine colors to make very dark values. And their subject matter is going to be outside, cafes, parties, parks, landscapes. But it does usually have some sort of hint of human life. Haystacks don't make themselves. Grass does not randomly turn into a haystack. That'd be hilarious. So yeah. <laughs> people. So while there is not a person in that painting, there is evidence of people. Nature as a social experience. Yes. What does it look like? So, short brush strokes, intense colors. We still have the atmospheric perspective. We see the haziness in the background. Heavy shadows, a concentration on the lighting of the moment. They didn't completely mix their paint. So while this will read, when you step back from it, it will read as a beige, it's actually a mixture, a blob of white, tan, yellow, that's streaked. Whoa. 
to give you an idea of how Impressionism works, this is a gentleman who looks very similar to Van Gogh, and that's his photograph. And this is how Impressionism would change it. He looks old in that painting thing. Because of all the lines and the texture. It's like face structure looks older. Like well, like yeah, I mean, he has a beard of a young person, but in his face is like an eight-year-old. Do you think that gives you an idea of his personality or his emotion? Like yeah. His, like me. So it kind of, in a way, it gives you more information than just a plain photograph. So I was talking about how you can lay colors next to each other and your eyes would mix it. What do you see? Blue and red. Good. Whoa. Whoa. It's small as well. Whoa. So I simply, I went on to Photoshop yesterday after school, and I made this grid of blue and red squares. I did a uh, screen video, and I just zoomed out. And as it zooms out, the colors aren't changing, but our eye can't tell them apart and it's mixing them in our office. What is that? It looks like kind of That is optical color mixing. That's what these guys are looking at. When we look at this image at a glance, it looks like some blonde chick, right? Okay, I'm going to zoom in on this area right above her ear. Do you see a lot of blonde? Nope. No. No. That's cool. Yeah? No. This kind of like people take like pictures of things and make them really small and then they look like from far away like different pictures. Yeah. Yes. So I was trying to example of that. Instead of those squares being just one color, there are some artists who will put an image instead of each of one of those colored squares. So when you zoom out, all the little images make a really big image. And it's oh, really nifty. Nice. They're really cool. They take a lot of planning. These artists focus on scenes of everyday life, such as going to the park, walking along the boulevard. Oh, that um, one is that that walking in the park? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that one before. Oh, yes. Right. Point to Lizzie. Point to Lizzie. Yeah. Sir um, in digital, it's not digital though. The idea of modern. We're going to talk about that with the Industrial Revolution. Public leisure. At no time in history um, has there been a lot of public leisure. With Renaissance, we just talked about there being a middle class at all. And now, not only are we going to have this middle class, but they're also going to have leisure time. It's kind of like how we have the weekends off. Is that, can I just go me? Um, I, my page is not So the idea of kind of a whole bunch of people hanging out at the park is brand new. A focus on light and a changing landscape. This is what the images are about. So the one with the park. Yes. Um, if you look at the guy with the top hats on the near left, and you look up a little, it kind of looks like someone chopped that one guy in half when you find it. Yeah, just go a little bit that way. Yes. In. Yeah, doesn't that look like half a person? Who does? See? This is it's a monkey, like, though. What is yeah. the monkey doing on the She has it on a leash. Go ahead. Oh, right here, it looks from like back there, it looks like this is an arm, that's an arm, and this is like a tie, and that's his head. Dad, what is that? It's a hot dog. Yeah. Five weeks. Five weeks. That's what it looks like. I have no idea what that is. It looks like a traffic cone. It looks like a Does it even have a face or anything? No. It's like a rock, the traffic cone is more of it. With the little circular thing on top. Yeah. So it's like, Who knows? <laughs> I just found that strange. Alright. 
So here's some reasons about why. The new railroad system. People can now get out to the country. It's kind of hard to paint the countryside when you can't see it. The invention of the flat brush, so instead of being circular, it's flat. That's new and allows them to do this technique. But mainly, the invention of the tube brought about Impressionism, of all things. Not that kind of tube. When artists made paint, when we talked about color theory, I talked about how they keep diaries of how to mix their paint. They would have to order powdered pigment, and then they would have linseed oil and water and all these ingredients that they would make, mix these powders in these jars. You can't go anywhere with that. You're pretty much stuck in your studio. The invention of the tube brought about pre-mixed paints. So now, instead of having a studio full of jars of ingredients, you now have a case of a dozen or so paint tubes that are only this big. You can put that in a bag and go take your train and go out to the country and paint outside. Artists are leaving the studio for the first time in history. That's why we're gonna see way more landscapes. The Renaissance had landscapes as backgrounds, but even those were seen through a window. We didn't have pure landscapes during the Renaissance. We're going to have the Industrial Revolution, and people are going to think of themselves as modern men with all the industry. So we need a modern art for modern men. And another really important one is the invention of the camera. Oh, yeah. Why would you spend tens of hours painting a portrait, like the one on the right, when you could just go, Pull it. click. <laughs> just show you the dedication. Show you dedicated a lot of the game. Show that you actually have one. Well, in my yeah. opinion, the art. Lauren, say that again. Say it again. Why does it look cooler? That's more details. So did you notice that they added the rug? The globe is bigger, and they added a nightscape outside. And like the texture. And the, the lamps. The, the, the first person that you picture doesn't look real. Oh, no. Right. So artists can do things that cameras can't. Cameras can only photograph things that exist. They are stuck in reality. A painter can do whatever they can imagine. So they can make a, a scene look better than it did by increasing the size of the globe, adding the stars, fixing up the curtains, making them look like they're lit. All those good things, they can just add those details. The idea of picturesque came from paintings. And it's not just because something was pretty, it was because an artist designs a painting. They can put every tree in the exact right place. How many of you guys have tried to take a picture but there's a blasted tree or a branch or a rock in the way? Oh, yeah. Yes, in a painting that never happens because you have control over everything. That is where the term picture S came from. So artists kind of go, oh crap. There's photography. We have no reason to be at historical events to make the paintings. There's no reason for us to do portraiture. What are we going to do? Picture. We're going to do something that cameras can't do. Cameras can't have that sketchy, painterly effect. The Industrial Revolution. While it's great for people on an economic level, it was 
uh, what does it say? Industrial uh, can, can represents hope, progress, advancement, possible of making life easier and more exciting, the idea of moderate. It's also dirty and ugly and loud. It's aggressive. It's domineering. And it's dangerous to be in those plants, those shops. We have so many safety regulations today because so many people were hurt before. Or killed. Or killed. That is right. The smog that was produced, there was a time period, I, I need to look up the date, but in London, the smog was so bad you couldn't see your hand outstretched in front of your face. They had to close down the entire city. A state of emergency was declared because of smog. This is depressing. This is one of the things that drives the artists out into the countryside to capture the essence of the subject and create an impression of it rather than delving into its details. It's not about how it looks. It's about how it feels to be there in that moment. The idea of impressionism. Make sure you have something down for a uh, camera. Well, I fix. out in the country and he moved into this place with ponds and ponds of water lilies and he spent his older years just painting the ponds and he would say his studio was outside. They're not realistic but they are beautiful in a different way. Miss Gibson? Was yes. Was there some famous painting of like the stars or something? Starry Night by Van Gogh. Yes, there is. Yeah. That one, it merges the line between Impressionism and Expressionism. So I don't show that one. Oh. Okay. Because it's more about an emotional quality. We so see it. I'm bringing it up while you guys are uh, filling in your Venn diagram. Okay. This is Monet's wife and son. His son looks like he has big eyes. Can you see his eyes? Yeah, yeah. I can see his okay. eyes. He has blue eyes. I don't see his eyes. Take a few minutes and fill in a comparison between Renaissance and Impressionism. What makes, which one do you think is better? Renaissance. Renaissance? Why do you think it's better? More realistic. More realistic? So realism is better? Why do you think realism is better? What? Well, why is realism better? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just think Renaissance is better. I don't even remember which one is. <laughs> <laughs> but you like the realism and the rich colors? Yeah. A lot of people will agree with you. A lot of other people like the softness and the quietness of impressionism. Is that a dog with cat? It's a dog. It's uh, one of those like a carrier things. Yeah, but they do. That is a symbol of fertility, actually. Yeah, yeah. Almost like a cat. Dog. Uh, I'll bring a picture. Oh, 